Howdy there. Before we get into the video, I'd like to say a quick thing. Since my last crafting video, there has been a massive influx of new subscribers to the channel due to a combination of participation in Miscast Monster Bash and some unrelated video game shitposts that have done shockingly well. Regardless of why you're here, I'd like to quickly say thank you for your support. It is genuinely heartwarming and I truly appreciate it. You have no idea. With that being said, the Lich's Lab is on its way to unlocking the Community tab. With that, I could communicate with you guys more often, tease upcoming projects, run polls, and most importantly, not have to interrupt the video like this. If you enjoy this video, I ask that you maybe share it with a friend who may be interested. Keep in mind you're not obligated to do so. Simply watching this much is more than I could ask from you, and I, I, once again, I appreciate it. With that being said, let's get into the introduction for a group of Space Marines I call the Angel's Lament. On the lifeless rocks of the planet Ball, an angel came to those in need from beyond the stars. This angel became known as Sanguinius, and under his leadership, he led the people of Ball out of the darkness into a new age of prosperity. Then, from the very stars that granted the people of Ball an angel, came a god. The angel had been lost to him, but Father reunited with Son on the plains of Ball. In this moment, the Primarch shed a single tear, overjoyed by his reunion with his father. He and his most faithful warriors were reorganized into the Ninth Space Marine Legion, the Blood Angels. Together, they took to the stars with their Emperor, a single white flower blossoming in the lifeless soil where his tear fell. It is now the height of the Horus Heresy. The Emperor of Mankind fights against the overwhelming forces of chaos, led by the vile arch-traitor Horus Lupercal. Embroiled in grueling civil war, the Blood Angels defy all odds as they withstand the unending tide of death crashing down on the Imperial Palace. Soon, Horus extends a challenge to the Emperor aboard the Vengeful Spirit. Sanguinius and his finest warriors accompany the Emperor aboard the ship and claw their way to Horus at the heart of the vessel. There the fate of the Blood Angels and all of humanity would change forever as the Arch Traitor slew Sanguinius in cold blood, the psychic feedback from the Angels' fall scarring the minds of his gene sons for millennia to come. The Emperor defeated Horus, but paid a heavy toll being confined to the stasis chamber of the Golden Throne. As the Loyalists conducted the scouring of the traitor legions, a handful of Sanguinius's most faithful returned to Ball to mourn the loss of humanity's brightest star. On the irradiated sands of their homeworld, they erected a great monastery to honor the Angel, ferociously guarding their most beloved remnant of their gene father, the flower that had bloomed the day the God Emperor had found his lost child, the Tear of Sanguinius. During the following years, the Astartes became fanatic in their vigil. Taking the flower on as their chapter identity, the Angel's Lament ferociously guarded the halls of this monastery. In groundless paranoia, they forbade all others from entering their inner cloisters, as the purity of the flower was not to be jeopardized. They have been rarely seen deploying with other Blood Angel brethren if there was the slightest chance to recover one of Sanguinius's holy relics, but defending the monastery was always their first priority. Under no circumstance was the tear to be vulnerable to the touch of the forces of chaos that stole their beloved gene father from them, and so they sat in reclusion for 10,000 years. It is now the end of the 41st millennia. The Tyranid high fleet known as Leviathan encroaches into Ball's orbit. Unspeakable hordes of Xenos blot out the sun as the greater demon Kabanda summons the forces of Korn to make flow the blood of humanity on the sands of Ball. The devastation of Ball had begun. Commander Dante of the Blood Angels called all of the Angels' children to protect their homeworld. Many would answer the call, but few would survive. In the bloodbath, the Angels lament fight desperately to stave off the demonic hordes of Chaos. Their determination to protect the Tyr was mighty, but their arms are aged and worn from the Great Crusade, and the combined forces of Chaos and Xeno are pressing them thin. 
in a desperate attempt to protect the tear of Sanguinius and his mementos, a portion of the chapter fled the monastery, the tear safely contained in a stasis vault, as the Astartes fought with prowess not seen since the days of the crusade. Boarding a ship, they fled as their fortress was overrun, their brother's fate still unknown to them to this day. Exiting the atmosphere of Ball, the high fleets were waiting for them, eager to incorporate their biomass into their conglomerate. The remnants of the Angel's Lament, in a desperate gambit to protect the Tear, narrowly fled into a warp storm. However, unbeknownst to them, this was one of the many hands of Exilus. The Angel's Lament emerged from warp space far away from the known universe, now within the iron grasp of the Exilus Sector. The remaining Astartes now seek to return the tear to the soil of Ball, a fate most likely doomed to fail. The Angel's Lament is an old chapter, with their founder having fought alongside Sanguinius aboard the vengeful spirit itself. After the heresy, they went into reclusion, not interacting much with the outside world at all. For me, this was a great way to utilize these recasted Mark IV Space Marine kits I got a hold of. Not only does the Mark IV match up with the equipment that was common at the time and preserved since then, but it also allowed me to use one of my favorite model kits that is sadly hard to come by in plastic now. Plus, there's just a tiny bit of nostalgia, as the first Space Marine I ever painted was a Mark IV Marine. His name is Jonesy, and he hangs out on my desk. I'm very fond of him. This batch of models in particular is being made with the newest Kill Team rules in mind, that being Kill Team from this year, uh, 2021. Seeing as I'm using tactical marines both model-wise and rules-wise, this means I can bring three Bolter marines, two special weapon marines, and a sergeant. I decided to keep this chapter firstborn only, both as I was making the list and making the lore. The chapter, in their growing distrust of those outside the monastery, largely distrusted and rejected the Primaris reinforcements that uh, Rowboat Gorilla Arms brought to many other Blood Angels chapters. Normally, he would be in his right authority to force them to accept them as, you know, he kind of runs the place at the moment, but at this point in history, the Angels' Lament has been largely ostracized by their brother chapters, mainly for ignoring the call to avenge the Angel during the scouring, instead mourning him in the darkness of their decrepit citadel. Seeing their general volatility to others, their limited military strength, and recognizing the fanaticism in guarding a single building, Rod Dog Godzilla Man agreed to send Primaris reinforcements to more worthwhile chapters. The Angel's Lament is currently operating out of an old heresy era vessel named the Oath of Enmity. It has been mostly inactive since the Crusades, so it's fallen into a bit of disrepair, but I wanted to use the space vessel as the kill team's base theme. Later on, you'll see that I used a brighter color scheme in general, so I kind of wanted a darker metallic base to offset it. Sadly, I can't show you how I made these bases in particular because these are actually bases I made out of boredom one day in like mid-2020-ish? It's just layered styrene sheets with some random tubes and strips glued down which way and whatnot, so, you know, it's not that hard to make something that blends in with it or reverse engineer it. After cleaning and assembling all the minis, I now opt to wash the models. Washing resin models is important as you get rid of any leftover mold release from the casting process. I just opted to do it after assembly simply because handling one model is way easier than trying to wash like nine different little bits. From here I put a pin in everyone's foot, primed them all white, and got ready to start painting. Compared to the predominantly red color scheme of the Blood Angel successor chapters, the Angel's Lament have an adoptive... The Angel's Lament have adopted an unorthodox color scheme. Their power armor is a light blue on white limbs, the white representing the glory and purity of Sanguinius, and the blue representing the tear he shed. It's not quite a blue or a blue-green, it's a mix. I painted onto a white primed mini to really help it pop with that white undercoat. I have no idea what shade of blue this is, but I really like it, so I'm just gonna call it shade I really like blue. Copyright. 
Currently, the Angel's Lament is planned to just be a smaller mini-faction within the Exilus Sector, kind of operating on the kill team level of things, so I don't currently have any plans on expanding them, but kind of out of curiosity, I've been pondering what I could do for Death Company Scheme, if I ever did, mainly because they have kind of a strange relation with the, uh, the gene flaws. Anyone vaguely familiar with the Blood Angels know that they have two primary gene flaws, the Red Thirst and the Black Rage. Due to their centuries in sequestered mourning, the Angels Lament seem to have somehow foregone the pull of the Red Thirst and generally no longer lust for the warmth of blood. Compared to all the other Sons of Sanguinius, they're a lot more reserved in general, so that makes them kind of less vulnerable of to getting picked up in that battle lust. It also also works as a nice little uh, in lore reason for why my chapter doesn't drink blood like goddamn vampires. Like, we know this is the vampire space marine chapter. We don't have to go all the way in on it, okay? It's kind of dumb. But I'm biased against vampires, so, you know. I'm, I'm working with what I got here. That being said, I didn't want to just take away gene flaws for no reason, so I, uh, I made it so they had a strange relationship with the Black Rage in particular. When a member of the Angel's Lament feels the call of the Angel's memory stirring within, they are somewhat idolized by their other battle brothers, reliving the glorious days of fighting alongside Sanguinius. As other chapters tend to look at them tragically, the Angel's Lament kind of looks at them like, you know, they're, they're, they're a goddamn rock star. They essentially enter them into the ranks of death companies as heroes and are deployed in small strike squads away from the monastery to uh, fight their final battle, so to speak. Given that regular death companies wear black armor, uh, I figured with the significance of the Black Rage and this kind of twist on Blood Angels culture, maybe they, you know, if I ever did like a combat patrol or something for these guys down the line, Maybe they could wear like all white or pure silver or maybe the other battle brothers repaint the red on their armor so they can, you know, really go out in that last hurrah as they used to back in the back in the good old days. With the base coats done, I move on to shading. Now, you guys know me. I'm really not the best painter. I like to think of myself as an okay painter. I know just enough to know how much I don't know, if that makes sense. One thing in particular I struggle with sometimes is contrast. So for this kit, I wanted to recess shade the power armor with black instead of my usual gray, just for that little, little bit of contrast and, you know, part division from a distance. After sealing the base coats with a gloss coat, I used my Tamiya panel liner and went to remove the excess with some Q-tips. And overall it went, you know, well, I got the effect I wanted, but I don't know if it was the Q-tips I used this time or what, but I spent the rest of my time with these minis pulling off so many goddamn cotton fibers from every little crack on the mini. It drove me crazy and then some, but I liked the look of the black on the white power armor. I'm not sure if I liked the headache getting there, but I like the, the final result and you know enough. I recognize it's kind of strange to my eyes, but I'm not sure if just because it's not something I'm used to, but I may keep going with black in the crevices, or maybe kind of find a compromise with a dark gray or something. I don't know. I, I want to toy around with this a little more in the future. Anyways, most of the painting process here is done. The last thing I wanted to do are the bases. As the ship they're stationed in, you know, like I said, was kind of left to rot for a little while. Uh, I wanted a bit of the neglected industrial look, but not completely brown and orange all over, like it's just rusted to hell and back. The ship was maintained while it was docked, but obviously there's no value in polishing up a ship that wasn't planning on seeing combat again. I also added in hazard stripes on the tripping hazards and places where it just generally looked good. I'm really, really coming to love hazard stripes as time goes on. To me, it's like one of those definitive parts of the 40k aesthetic to me. You see less hazard stripes these days, unless you like hang out with an Iron Warriors player, which is a shame, but 
you know, after getting everything painted up, a bit of typhus corrosion splattered in some crevices, I super glue the feet and the pin onto the base, add a matte coat, and the Angel's Lament were ready to go. And just like that, another faction joins Exilus. I was kind of hesitant on adding another Space Marine faction when I kind of already have one, but like, I don't know, I just, I really like the Mark IV kit. It was cheap, I bought it, and yeah, I don't know how much action they're going to get, but you know, they're a smaller side faction. I, I think it's okay to have them. We have Renegade Marines, we've got Necrons, we've got Chaos Marines, we've got one of each so far, and you know, not to, uh, make any promises or anything, but I have uh, been considering some more Xenos in Exilus, so might be something to look out for in the future, eh? 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 Eh. I recorded a big monologue about me talking about, you know, recasts and the hobby in general, um, but now that I'm editing this, I can't really find a good spot to put it in. I also had to, like, trim it down a lot to kind of make it flow and kind of lost some of the substance in there. So I think one day, I think I'm just going to make a dedicated video talking about my thoughts on recasting and 3D printing and everything. I don't know, I, th I think it might be a good little uh, sit back and enjoy me rambling about something episode. Although I guess that's all of them. <laughs> Speaking of rambling, I decided, I mean, obviously you're at the end of the freaking video, um, I decided to open the video with a more like stylized lore intro dump and then move into more of the hobby focus with some more lore sprinkled in there and um I, I i it feels like a mix between like my necron dynasty being contained all in one video and like the the early early videos for like my space marine chapter kind of meshed into one but it's, I, I like this format as well for introducing minor factions, like, you know, when it specifically comes to wargaming. I was kind of hoping that it would kind of get across the intent with, you know, get you more familiar with, like, my vision going into the project and reasoning for why lore for some, you know, part of the chapter was some way and... A little bit of, you know, introduction on culture and how they operate and whatnot. I don't know. I think I'm just talking in circles at this point. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, so. But yeah, I, uh, I really had fun with this uh, sort of side project kind of thing. As for my next project, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. I kind of want to do some uh, something video game related in particular. And I kind of have an idea. You know, like, hey, you get an idea or something kind of sticks in your head and you kind of brew on it for like six months or whatever and like it just kind of claws at the back of your head until it needs to come out somehow. I think it's that. But I'm starting to keep a little uh, Google Doc sheet of some ideas that I've had and uh, maybe I'll pull from that. But uh, it's like four lines at the moment. I don't know. I. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't have a structured workflow. I just kind of go with these things. You know, go with the flow. It's, it's, it's good life advice, except when it doesn't apply. You know, you know, whatever. All right, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting late. You guys know me. I don't script the end of these videos. I just kind of speak, like, flow of consciousness from the heart kind of thing. But in general, um, thank you for everyone, you know, who's supporting the channel by subscribing, commenting. Um, you know, I, I... I really appreciate the regulars that come by and watch the videos. You know, I, I appreciate the new people coming in, you know, poking their head around, you know, seeing, you know, what, you know, what the, what the lab is about. Regardless, thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.